Four years ago, I bought an empty Nissan cargo van and outfitted it as my home slash studio on wheels. It was the first place I could truly call my own, and as a filmmaker and photographer, I wanted it not only to be a comfortable dwelling, but to also be a capable creative space. Naturally, that presented its own set of challenges. We could do a whole van tour video, and I will, but in this video I want to talk specifically about the way I've used my van as a creative hub, and talk about how it's helped me grow my channel and my career along the way. I just ran around the world. Did you see how fast that was? Anyway, my name's Cody Mitchell. I'm a filmmaker, photographer, van dweller. You're not really here for me. This is Inez, my adventure filmmaking photography studio on wheels slash house. Uh, yeah, a few technical details before we get into why you're here. I think you'll understand why in a second. So Inez is a 2012 Nissan NV2500 that I purchased used and empty. She is roughly the same length and wheelbase as other high top vans like the Mercedes Sprinter and the Ford Transit. However, Inez is built on a Nissan Titan pickup chassis. You can see the similarities in the truck shape front. This means that she has a larger engine bay compared to other cargo vans, which means that she's easier to work on, but also means that there's less actual cargo space in the back. Prior to the conversion, the interior dimensions were nine feet long by six feet wide or for all you metric folk out there, that's 1.83 meters wide by 2.74 meters long. Some really basic math later, and we can work out that the interior area was 56 square feet or five square meters. To put that into context, my sister's closet is bigger than that. Looking at you, Marin. So, anybody who's converted a van before knows that it's enough of a challenge to fit a living space inside of it. It is an entirely different element, however, to configure it as a productive space for mobile filmmaking and photography, which is why we are gonna tour this van in two separate videos. The first video, this one, is gonna be for all my fellow creatives out there who might be interested in taking a gander at what I've got going on inside here. Uh, the second video, is gonna be the traditional van tour where I get into the nitty gritty of everything else. Over the last three years of having this as my creative space, it has been my secret weapon for reasons obvious and not so obvious, but we're gonna get into all of that right now. So enough of me yammering outside of the van. Let's go yammer inside the van. I thought that that was more clever than just telling you guys it's too warm for this sweater. Uh, I cleaned up a little bit, but you know, I'm on time crunch here, so this is the best you're gonna get. So in designing this van, I obviously knew I wanted to have a comfortable dwelling, but I also knew that I was gonna be dedicating myself to the growth of this channel, the building of my business, and the honing of my craft. My goal was the ultimate adventure photography studio on wheels. And what we ended up with was the closest version of that within my budget. Uh, now, this is obviously not a fully fledged studio like many creators on this platform have, but it is well suited to do the couple of things that I really needed it to do, which were, number one, provide me with a space, a controlled lighting environment where I can shoot talking head and B-roll, check. Number two, allow me to travel with and maintain my array of gear in an organized and ready to shoot kind of way. This is what I came up with. 
So here in the kitchen, you know, looking around, you don't really see anything that's particularly video photo oriented. And that's very much intentional. I wanted it not to feel like a studio, but just to feel like a home. The only thing that really sticks out is that. Um, but we'll get to that. We're gonna start at the back and then we'll move forward and we'll gradually make a mess as we do. Let's do that. So this back cabinet kind of operates as the creative hub for the van. It is pretty much the biggest space in here with the exception of underneath the bed. Uh, it's bigger than the area I have for my food, for my cookware, for my clothing. Uh, and the reason because of that is I have a lot of gear for a guy who doesn't have a particularly large van. So starting at the top, these top two shelves are my cameras. Now, I originally thought of, I originally thought of padding these so that you could just put the cameras in in their native state and you didn't need to put them in a bag, but I decided that I wanted them to be a little bit more well protected, especially when driving on rough roads. So I've actually had this camera bag since, I don't know, I was a kid and I just stuck my camera in it and I put it on here and it worked out just fine. So I took to eBay and bought a few more of this exact same model. This is the TLZ-1 if you're curious. Nothing particularly special about this bag. I'm pretty sure I got this one for like $7, but it does the job just fine. Now this bottom shelf is the charging hub for all the gear. So I have this 12 outlet surge protector that is hardwired into the AC power of the van, which is powered by an inverter. And I also have this 12 volt USB hub down here that is also hardwired. Now, the reason why I have two things going on in here, USBs and wall plugs, instead of just having one or the other for simplicity's sake, is power consumption. So without digressing into the van's electrical system too much, the 12 volt system in this van is always active, right? The 120 volt system, however, needs to be run through an inverter. We have to invert the 12 volt to 120 volt power. That requires power. So when you're not using 120 volts, when you're not using these outlets, you're just kind of wasting power. The inverter chews through a lot of energy just sitting there. So if you don't need to use it, don't use it. Uh, I really only use the wall outlets for you know high power accessories in here. That would be my MacBook charger, the cable for the monitor goes into here, um, my gimbal, yada, yada, yada. All of the little batteries and things like that are fed from this USB hub. You know, things like my camera batteries, my wireless transmitters, my microphones, all, the, all those little things. And when everything is charged and done and ready to be used, I put it in this little box here and that lets me know that all the batteries are charged, but it also has the added benefit of preventing things from sliding out of the cabinet and all over the van. And if you're thinking, well, the box probably slides. No, it doesn't. It is adhered to this shelf. It is not doing any sliding. And then we've also got some gaff. Gotta have the gaff. Now moving down beneath the charging shelf, we have what I affectionately like to call the black hole. This is definitely the least organized part of the van. And you can think of it kind of as just a gear pit. It is a large volume of space and uh, definitely one that I wanted to utilize. And it was really the only remaining spot that I could store a bunch of large things. So let's see what's in here tech pouch of a bunch of hard drives and cables, video light, camera bag with a camera inside of it, gimbal, yeah, come on, car suction cup mount, got a couple of these camera pouch organizers. This one is, oh, this one actually kind of has a purpose. I will show you this. So this one is my voiceover talking head kit. So I have, you know, my uh, pop socket, pop shield, uh, a very smushed wind muff, aperture MC, friction arm. Got another one and this one is just entirely miscellaneous. Lens, battery chargers, camera batteries for film cameras, filters. And if you're thinking, Cody, you have a lot of stuff that it doesn't really look like you use. Trust me, I use it. I have done many a purge in this van. There's gotta be more down here. 
handy dandy gorilla pod. Is that it? Oh, thank God. Yeah, that's the pit. Don't recommend doing that if uh, you are in the market for whatever you call this. So that's all the stuff that we pulled out of the black hole. Pretty decent amount of stuff. Now, not all of this is stuff that's, you know, for shooting in here and not all of it is van studio related. So I'm not really gonna get into all of this because um, that's not really what this video is about. I guess I'm just gonna plug this now. If you are interested in, you know, a video reviewing the specific pieces of kit that we're discussing in this van relative to the studio in here, uh, I will be doing a deep dive into all of those things and my thoughts about them on my Patreon. Okay, I'm gonna put all this back in here and show you the next part because that's how it works in here. You know, it's, it's one or the other. It's, you can do this or you can do this because everything takes over the whole space. And... So moving forward in the van, it would be pretty hard to miss this. It is a 32 inch Samsung ultra wide monitor and it definitely is not necessary. Uh, but I did edit on this before I had the van and I figured it might as well come in here with me. I don't use it for editing as much as I probably should, but uh, yeah, it is nice to have when I do set up the table and I do do a dual, do do a dual monitor setup and run the HDMI cable to it for some extra screen real estate. To be honest though, mostly I just use it for watching movies and YouTube videos. This is the aforementioned table obviously, slash desk. Um, most of the time it's in its stowed state behind the cabinet behind you. Um, but yeah, uh, this is where I do most of my editing and sitting and eating and all of the things. I just have a piece of plywood on top of it, which is unfortunate because I had a really beautiful plan for my table and I'm going to digress and tell you that story now. So once upon a time in a magical world far, far away, and by that I mean three years ago in central California, I had a beautiful world map that I wanted to seat into a table and have epoxy on top of it, and it was gonna be like the cherry on top, right? So I had a world map, built a frame around it, got everything ticked to tide, adhered the map to the table, and then I poured the epoxy and I made sure to mix the epoxy and the resin hardener, whatever, exactly one-to-one, -one, did everything to manufacturer specifications, and it never cured. Uh, it's supposed to cure within like two days. I gave it like a week uh, and ended up sitting in my dad's garage for ever. Uh, he ended up throwing it out after a couple months. So yeah, I think it's probably at the dump now, probably still hasn't cured. So I just have this piece of plywood, which isn't, great but yeah I had to bring that up because I'm still bitter about it I'm often traveling with a lot of larger gear too and where that ends up depends on what it is and how often I use it for example tripods I usually keep up towards the front under the bed is where I'll keep other large assorted items other than that such as a light stand if I'm traveling with one my pelican case and my softbox which leads us to the moment you've all been waiting for, the sprinkler. It's not actually a sprinkler, but that's what most people think it is. No, this is a mounting stud that I've bolted into the ceiling. And I use this for a couple of different things. Most recently, I've been experimenting with mounting a grip head and extension off of it, which allows me to kind of move a ball head throughout the space and put the camera in places that would otherwise be difficult to get a tripod into. It's kind of just difficult setting up tripods in here in general. So yeah, that's been really cool. But the thing that I use it for the most is actually for mounting my video light. So the next thing I would do would be to set up a tripod in between these two cabinets. So many of you are probably fairly familiar with this angle, uh, but normally I'm not squatting. So for that, I have this. All right, now this is looking kind of familiar. Now usually it takes a little bit of tweaking. Now, I've closed this door. I've closed the kind of window covers in the back 
Uh, normally I like a little bit of extra light in here. We've got some light coming in from the windshield, but I wanted to close those off just because I want to show you what I kind of use sometimes for like the cherry on top. So I've gone into the talking head uh, voiceover bag and I pulled out my Aperture MC and the friction arm. This is just a small little RGB panel light. So I'll take this and I'll put it behind me and point it at myself and it'll kind of become like a bit of a kicker, rim, hair light, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. You can kind of see, right? Yeah, it's kind of outlining me from the background just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that up there. Okay, so this is just the light coming through the windshield and actually one of my mirrors is reflecting onto me right now, but we'll deal with that. We can see that the windshield's actually giving us a decent amount of light and I like to use it often, but uh, this isn't ideal because we're actually getting a bit of reflection going on that, that, that metal back there. And I'm also obviously getting hit in the face with this mirror, but we'll leave it be. So then we can go ahead and turn on the kicker and you can see that that makes me pop out from the background just a little bit. And then I've already got the van lights on, obviously, and then we just go ahead and turn on the big one. And so that's the setup. Uh, I've shot many a video seated in this exact spot with this exact setup, dating all the way back to, you know, three years ago, pretty much, which is kind of crazy. I have probably done a good job of you know, finessing this video to make it look like everything's all rosy and this is fantastic and blah, blah, blah. But you know, vans are full of compromises and this one is no different. For example, just shooting this video has turned my entire van into a sty. The front driver's seat is littered with gear and things that I didn't want in the shot. And uh, yeah, if I wanted to move the van, we'd have to do this whole shuffling of things. Back here is kind of like that too. And uh, luckily all this is kind of tucked away in the shadow, but yeah, it's a trade-off that you make for having a creative space on the road, you know, having a space that's, you know, your kitchen and your studio and your bedroom. So that probably doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but you know, after three years of this being, you know, my sole creative space and, you know, my house, uh, I'm kind of outgrowing it a little bit. And so in the next, you know, couple months, I'm going to be establishing a home base with an actual studio space, like one that doesn't have wheels beneath it and isn't also, you know, kitchen, living room, etc., etc. And in going through the motions of figuring out that transition, I'm realizing just how easy it is to get caught up in all of the things that you need in order to do creative work in this world. It seems like whatever field you're in, there's always somebody telling you what you have to have in order to do the thing you want to do. And so yes, this is another video about things, about stuff that someone else has that you might not have. But what I'm not gonna do is sit here and tell you that you need any of this. I'd like to share with you an epiphany I had recently that I think came directly from living in this space and creating out of it for the last three years. Now that I'm on the cusp of this evolution, this next step from tiny van studio to dedicated creative space, I've realized that the things I once viewed in the van as limitations weren't limitations. They were liberations. By nature of the van, I was forced to be intentional and selective with the few tools that would not only fit, but that would actually make me a more effective creator. It was an involuntary lesson in minimalism. She wouldn't allow me to get carried away with gear because I simply didn't have space for it. As a result, instead of trying to solve my creative challenges by acquiring new tools, I had to look for more inventive ways of working with what I already had and what I could carry with me. It exercised my creative problem-solving abilities and made me discerning when I did need to invest in a piece of gear. 
Constraints forced me outside to seek more exciting backdrops, encouraged me to be a more inventive storyteller, and invited me to create unburdened by the unnecessary. Now, of course, along the path, there reaches a time where those same constraints that were once spurs to your growth now become impediments. And that's the point that I've been combating for a while now. But the lesson that I've learned over the last few years is that simplicity is power. Despite what everybody on the internet might say, especially people on YouTube saying that every photographer needs this, every filmmaker needs this LUT, this camera, this lens, this $6,000 version of what you already have because it's marginally better at the most inconsequential things. It's cost, it's just like need, 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 and we get caught up in it. Do not let the world capitalize and prey upon your creativity to the point of stifling it entirely clogging it up with trivialities, emptying your pockets in the process. Sure, in any field, there are basic tools that are needed, but beyond that, and most importantly of all, what matters is doing, creating, getting the ball rolling, building momentum, failing, learning from those mistakes, reinventing, persevering, Now, this might be one of those moments where you're like, ah, man, Cody, it's easy for you to say that, but this isn't some distant memory to me. I'm not on the other side removed. I am in the river, up to my neck in water, wading forward. Odds are you are as well. So if your inner creative child is feeling burdened by the need for a thing, for something circumstantial to change in order for you to be creative, I invite you to take a step back. To look at these limitations, not as a lack, but as an opportunity to creatively problem solve. Because the truth is, it's through the problem solving that we discover our true creative power. So that was a big tangent. In all honesty, this is just my story. You do what feels best for you. So this was once a video about my van. So we're gonna loop back there real quick. This is not goodbye to Inez, nor is it the end of her reign as studio on wheels. She's not going anywhere. You will still see her front and center in many a video to come. Sure, I'm gonna have an actual studio space without wheels on it, and I'm sure I'll do a nifty job of laying out all my tools and stuff in there, and, and you'll see a lot of that, and it's gonna be great. And I'm very excited about it. But I think very often you will find me reverting back to the simplicity of being in here, being out in nature, and creating things unburdened by the unnecessary. Because it is my belief that the things that make us the most creative versions of ourselves are not actually things at all.